Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today, inshallah, we shall begin our journey to the animal kingdom. Previously, we talked about the two bacterial kingdoms, the kingdom Archibacteria, the kingdom Eubacteria. We talked about the protist, we talked about the fungi, and we talked about the extensive plant kingdom. Today, we shall begin our journey of the animal kingdom. Now, the animal kingdom is vast, as you know, and includes all these various different kinds of animals. So how is it that so many different living things can be classified in the same category. In other words, what is special about all of these living things that they're considered animals? Saying that another way, what are the characteristics of animals compared to plants, fungi, protist, and bacteria? Well, here they are. There are six characteristics of animals that we shall study. First, that they're all eukaryotic and multicellular living things. Second, that they are mobile except for the sponges, which are unique in that way, in that they are not mobile. And third, that they're all heterotrophs, meaning that they depend on other living things for the nutritional supply. And fourthly, all of them have some way of digesting the, the food that they ingest. Fifthly, they have adaptations that protect and support them. These are body adaptations, such as skeletons, etc., that are designed to protect them and support them, which of course has a survival advantage. And finally, as we've seen before, that all animals start out in a blastulous state. That is, their early embryological development is the same. So these are six important characteristics that are shared by all animals. So again, first, all animals are eukaryotes, and all animals are multicellular by definition. There are no prokaryotes and there are no unicellular animals. Animals are by definition eukaryotic, and multicellular. Second, animals move. Even a jellyfish and a cheetah and some have adopted quite amazing ways of locomotion. Thus, animals move. They are mobile living creatures. Except for sponges, which are sessile, that is, they do not move. Mobility is advantageous in obtaining food and in protection that is escaping from a predator and also has a survival advantage. So I suggested that all animals are eukaryotic and multicellular and that they are mobile and this definitely gives them a certain survival advantage in obtaining food and protecting themselves from predators and in reproduction that isn't giving them a survival advantage. Third, they're all heterotrophs. That is, there are no autotrophs or photosynthetic animals. They all depend on other living things for food. Even a barnacle, as you see before we hear, are heterotrophs. Their mouth, so to speak, kind of opens and they put out their filters and capture small organisms. So all animals must obtain their food from other living things. Now here's an example of the coral. A coral, which kind of looks like this, traps the food and takes it into its gastrovascular cavity. In other words, inside over here is where digestion occurs. So when the food is trapped, the food goes inside and digestion occurs inside this cavity over here. This coral it has a mouth, and these tentacles have tiny little cells that shoot out like poison darts, capturing the prey, which is then eaten. In this beautiful representation, you can see a higher magnification of the tentacles, which cells that shoot out little darts of poison, capturing their prey. And these corals are at different stages. See, this one over here is a different stage of feeding than this one over here. Now, these are trying to capture their food. These are busy digesting their food. So as you can see, even simple organisms like these, they must obtain food from other living things. A fourth characteristic of all animals is that they must digest food. If they are heterotrophs, that is if they are dependent on other living things for food, once they obtain the food, they must digest it. So one of the qualities of all animals is that they have some form of gastrointestinal tract or some sort of digestive mechanism. This flatworm here which is considered one of the more primitive type of living things, has a digestive tract with only one opening. The mouth here basically serves as the entrance and the exit. As food enters over here, it's digested in this vast network of the gastrovascular cavity. Now this is quite a remarkable accomplishment because this little worm is a little tiny little thing like that. It does not have a brain per se or a cardiovascular system, but all animals must have a way of digesting their food. 
The fifth characteristic of animals is that they have a body plan. In other words, their bodies have evolved into shapes that support them and that protect them. Animals' body plans are so because it gives them a certain survival advantage. And animals can be classified, broadly speaking, into those that have bilateral symmetry, that is their body can be divided into two halves, like mirror images, just like ourselves and this beetle over here. Or animals can have radial symmetry, that is they're symmetrical in all sides. A coral polyp here is radially symmetrical. So sponges here are asymmetrical, and the corals like we have seen before, they are radially symmetrical. Now bilateral symmetry implies that the animal can be cut in two halves like mirror images. Now the front end of the living thing is called the anterior end and the back end is called the posterior end. And most of the important sense organs that are important for the survival are concentrated in the anterior end. It's a more efficient use of senses. So animals that have bilateral symmetry have an anterior end and a posterior end. The back end, that's called the dorsal end, and the tummy end, that's called the ventral end. To me, the D kind of looks like a B. So the back, like our back side, is the dorsal end. And our tummy side, that's the ventral end, like some people are very ticklish. So these are important terms that we should familiarize ourselves with. Anterior, posterior, dorsal, and ventral aspect of a living thing that has bilateral symmetry. Now here's a living thing that has radial symmetry. This is the hydra. Hydra has tentacles with stinging cells. These cells have venom that immobilize their prey, and then of course the hydra eats it. So I've suggested that all animals are eukaryotic multicellular living things. They are mobile, except for the sponges which are sessile. They're heterotrophs, meaning that they rely on other living things for food, which also implies, even in the most primitive of all animals, some form of digestive tract. Also, animals demonstrate adaptations for protection and support. For example, broadly speaking, animals can be classified as invertebrates and vertebrates. That is, animals that have a backbone over here like this kitty, and animals that do not. So broadly speaking, therefore, animals can be classified as either vertebrates, that is, those that have backbones, and invertebrates, those that do not have backbones, like this crab over here. Now invertebrates, that is those that do not have a backbone, they frequently have exoskeletons, meaning they have skeleton that is on the outside. Examples of exoskeleton include the crab that I just mentioned and this grasshopper here. One disadvantage of exoskeleton is that the animal, if it wants to grow, it has to molt. That is, it has to get rid of the old skeleton to form a new exoskeleton. This is called molting. So every time it kind of wants to grow, it has to molt and make a new exoskeleton. The exoskeleton starts out kind of soft and then as it matures it becomes hard. So just after molting, before the new exoskeleton has matured, the living thing is vulnerable to predators. Even this little ant is trying to get at his grasshopper. Now some invertebrates, that is those that don't have backbones, can have endoskeleton, that is their skeleton can be on the inside. Example, the starfish. See, the starfish has endoskeleton, but there's no backbones in starfish. Now vertebrates, their defining feature, of course, that they have a backbone like this. Now among the vertebrates, there are great varieties. A cow, a fish, an alligator, a duck here, like these are all vertebrates. They all have backbones. On the other hand, consider the invertebrates. None of these critters on the right side have any backbones. And this broad categorization, the invertebrates and the vertebrates, is how we shall organize our knowledge of the living things. We shall first study the invertebrates, and after we're done with those, we shall go on to the vertebrates. And finally, the last category that is shared by all animals is that they all start out as blastulas. That is, their early embryological development is the same. Now, I've talked about this before, how a zygote is formed from sperm and egg, which then develops into an embryo, which goes on to become the blastula, which then develops into the gastrula with an opening over here. Further development gives rise to the third germ layer, which is the mesoderm, and this process culminating in the formation of the three germ layers. The primitive animals, as you recall, have only the ectoderm and the endoderm, whereas more complex animals have all the three germ layers, the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. Now, this early embryological development 
is common to all animals, from the corals to the tigers to the elephants and to the hummingbird, and that is quite remarkable. But then again, there's vast diversity among the animal kingdom. How do we subcategorize these living things? How do we begin to sort out who belongs with whom? Now this categorization is suggested here. What you see before you is sometimes called the tree of life, or the evolutionary tree, a scientific hypothesis as to how all living things evolved. The central idea being that we all evolved from a common ancestor over here. And as time went on, different living things evolved. So in this diagram, which we shall study in detail next time, you will see more primitive organisms here and more advanced organisms all the way over here. This final category, the most advanced of all animals, are the chordates, that is, those that have backbones. This shall be the subject of our topic next time. Until then, as-salatu wa salam rasulillah wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. As-salamu alaykum.